Welcome to this edition of AMD Developer Inside Track. I'm here today with the AMD Runtimes team. So gentlemen, why don't you start by introducing yourselves? Sure, my name's uh, Gary Frost from the uh, AMD Runtimes team. And I'm Tom Deneau, also from the Runtimes team. Great, Tom, could you tell me about some of the projects you've been working on? Sure, uh, the, the team started out as a, a Java performance team. Uh, really dealing with server-side Java performance. But uh, recently we've, we've added other runtime environments to our set of things that we're looking at. So we've been looking at PHP performance, Python performance, and even some client-side things like Flash. But gen generally performance is what we focus on. Gary, your team has just released a product called Apparapi. Could you tell us about it and also tell us how it relates to the AMD Fusion initiative? Sure. So, so Apparapi is a um, Java API for a, arranging for data parallel solutions to be executed on, on the GPU. Um, we originally came across the idea when we started to look at the OpenCL project that came out last year, and uh, we wanted to make sure there was a way for Java developers to be able to take advantage of it. Initially, we thought we would do this through JNI, and it, uh, for Java developers, that's sometimes a little bit clumsy, and it, it leads them into an area they don't want to get into, which is C, C++ development. Uh, we then started looking at some of the Java bindings for OpenCL, which were becoming available fairly quickly after OpenCL was re released. But even there, we felt that they were direct translations of OpenCL, and they didn't really feel that they were Java-style APIs. So we, we thought about putting together an API which would allow people to write the data parallel code in pure Java, and then have in the background uh, some code that would be able to convert that Java code to OpenCL on the fly and offload it to the GPU. We felt this would be a better fit for, for Java developers, enable them to take advantage of the programming style and some of the Java semantics and ways in which they solve problems without having to learn a brand new language. Tom, what are some of the benefits to Java developers? Well, one thing is that the developer expresses that a certain routine is something that can be parallelized rather than having us try to solve the hard problem of looking at all their code and figuring out which parts can be parallelized. And the way they express uh, this is by overloading a run routine in a kernel class that we provide them. So it's very similar to the way they're already used to overloading run routines for thread classes. Uh, once they've specified this run entry point, then we'll uh, look at that and translate it to OpenCL if we can, and if we, if we can do that, we'll, we'll run it out on the, the GPU device. If for some reason the way they've expressed the code is, is something that cannot be translated to OpenCL, then we'll still run it in a Java thread pool, uh, taking advantage of multiple cores on the CPU if, if they exist. So they'll still get better performance than they would have gotten from a serial implementation. And this all leads to the, the common Java notion of, you know, write once and run anywhere, R extending the run anywhere out to the GPU now. Gary, does this require a modified JVM? And also, how are you able to arrange for the Java code to execute on the GPU? Um, so at first, actually, we thought we may need to modify the JVM. We actually have some experience from that from our performance analysis of the JVM. Um, but then we thought we would like to um, to, to separate it out so that A, we could execute against any JVM, we weren't locked to a particular uh, VM, um, but secondly we thought it would be a good way for us to prototype more rapidly rather than having to change the whole JVM. So we finally came up with a, a sort of library approach where um, we have a, a jar file and we have a, some JNI code which is in the DLL, um, both for Linux and for Windows, and we're able to do all this on the library side, which look in hindsight is actually a kind of cleaner way for us to do this. It allows us to do this without sort of polluting the JVM, and it allows us to move at a, a different pace or on a different release cycle to the JVMs themselves. Um, the way this, this sort of kind of works is when we're at runtime, when we look at the bytecode for the original intent, um, the, the run method, as Tom alluded to, um, we, we start to actually analyze the bytecode of that method and any method reachable from the run method. And by doing this, we're able to essentially take the bytecode and see if we could convert it to OpenCL. 
we, we essentially do the same thing that uh, the Java developers may be used to with JAD or Mocha, which is able to take compile bytecode and re-engineer it or reverse it back into Java source code. We, we essentially use a similar practice, but instead of going back to Java source code, we go to an intermediate form, which we can then turn around again and generate OpenCL from, which gets compiled by the OpenCL compiler and offloaded to the GPU. Um, in this way, it's kind of hidden from the, the developer we're actually doing. They're just writing their normal Java code, and we're doing this work behind the scenes to arrange for the code to be executed on the GPU. So does it only work on AMD platforms? Well, for the alpha release, we did decide to uh, narrow down our test matrix and lock it to AMD platforms. But there's no technical reason why it has to be this way. And, and for future releases, we expect to relax this. Uh, we, we generate standard OpenCL code. That OpenCL code should run on any implementation of, of the OpenCL standard. And how do people find it? It's actually pretty easy. There's, there's a page on developer.amd.com slash uh, You can go there, and there are downloads for different operating system platforms. Uh, you can get the download. When you look in that, you'll see there are also some samples in there that can get you started. And the source is there for the samples, so you can uh, use those as a starting point for your own investigations. And the uh, the start page there on developer.amd.com also points you to some forums where we'd be interested in getting your feedback when you use this product. Okay, so Gary, what's on the horizon for Q4 and for 2011? Okay, so so of course what we what we put out after Java One was an alpha release, and, and since then we've been busy looking forward to to what we might um, be able to fit into the the beta schedule. Um, some feedback we got from um, directly from Java One actually um, was in particular domains um, that were looking at using AppRapi. We started to look into those areas and we started to realize that AppRapi would work very, very well for what we originally intended, which is a Java binding for general compute. But there were still a few areas that fall more into what we would call the map reduce type problem, where we're actually executing um, mu multiple kernels or iterating over kernel executions. So what, what we really mean here is instead of just offloading all of the work to the GPU and then pulling it back uh, to the host, we're actually requiring to interact between the host and the GPU on a frequent basis, maybe in some sort of tight loop. Um, the original version of Apple Appy, the alpha version, um, has to be pessimistic, and so therefore would copy buffers backwards and forwards every single time, even if that buffer tended not to be used on the host side. Um, OpenCL sorts this out or solves this problem by allowing explicit memory control we originally didn't want to include that in alpha, but we're looking at ways that we can include that in beta, which would allow a developer to say, well, I'm moving this data to the GPU, I want to do some work on it, and don't bother pulling it back until I tell you that I need it pulled back. This can give us some enormous uh, performance improvements. So uh, we're looking at including um, explicit memory management, and also maybe even some notion of describing map reduce as a specific pattern. So a user would essentially be able to declare, not that they're just writing a kernel, but this really is a map reduce problem, and there will be some other um, optimizations that we would be able to take advantage of, understanding that there's going to be a map phase followed by a reduce phase. And Tom? Yeah, a couple other areas we're looking at. Uh, there is, on the Java side, the most natural way for someone to write their uh, application would be to use objects but we don't support those in the alpha release. So really, you have to pass your data in the form of primitive arrays. So we think, uh, you know, allowing object-oriented programming style, and then under the covers doing the work to translate those objects to the arrays that would, that the OpenCL device would use, would be, uh, would make things easier for the developer. And then another area we're looking at is the OpenCL language itself exposes some uh, additional memory address spaces uh, because the, the GPU devices tend to have different levels of, me of the memory hierarchy, so they'll operate. You can get better performance if you say, okay, my memory is, is just local to this work group of, of uh, work items on the GPU, things like that. So the power user could, if we give them the, the capability, the power user could then 
use these memory addresses spaces and uh, pass their data that way. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you for your time today. And this concludes it. Thank you. Thank you.